Hello, I want to say a big thank you for joining me on today's tutorial. Today, I want to show you how to use pop-ups in your bubble application. Pop-ups are great for so many things. They're great for notifications. They're great for displaying data. They are. They just. They just makes make give your give your app an extra feel. It enables you to push data to different parts of your application when you need to. So that's what I'm going to be showing you today. It's going to be a quick tutorial. Just um, grab a cup of coffee, join me. If you've not subscribed to this channel, feel free to click, click on the subscription button so you can uh, get a notification whenever I launch a new video. And also, if you're pretty new to Bubble and you're looking for an all-round course that you can take, there's a video on my YouTube channel right there. You would see it up here or probably in the description below. Just take it. It's um, it's up. To, it's a, it's a um, four hour, 26 minute video. It's going to take you from being a beginner to being a pro when it comes to using Bubble. And if you're someone who's working on your project and you need help, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be able to give you the best help that I can. Thank you so much. Let's get started learning how to build with Bubble. So when you're using pop-up in your Bubble application, what you're majorly doing with pop-up, you're either going to be displaying data in that pop-up or you're either going to be sending notification to that pop-up. That's the two major ways that you use pop-up in Bubble. Don't forget, the pop-up is a type of container, but this time it only opens when you basically click something. Uh, when you click something, when a particular action takes place, you can launch a pop-up. So, for example, if a user completes a form, you can launch a pop-up to say, hey, you have successfully completed that form. So let's go ahead and see how to use the pop-up. So um, first and first, we need to find a way to trigger the pop-up. That's the first thing you want to do. So to do that, I'm just going to pop in a group right here. Just a simple group. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, on, the, on, on this page, I'm going to turn it into layout. I'm going to turn this into a row. A row or a column is fine. I'm just going to turn this into a row. Um, so just leave it that way. And I have a group in here before. So let me see what I have. Okay, I'm gonna pop in a group right there. So that's my group. My group, I'm going to I'm going to just call it a column. It's fine, put it in the middle. I'm gonna put it in the middle. It's fine, and I'm going to give it some, just gonna remove, give it a flat color. And I like to work with red, 10%. So that's fine. Okay, so we're going to trigger our pop-up from here. And for this, I'm going to add a button so I can trigger this pop-up. I'm going to add a button, like so, put it in the middle. Um, give it 200 by 50. That's fine. And then I'm going to say open pop-up. So that's fine. And so what we want to do, we're going to open the pop-up whenever we click on this button. So let's go ahead and create a pop-up. First, to do so, come to your group container right here and just click on, click on, come to your container and click on pop-up and open it. Drag it as much as, drag it anyhow you want to drag it. You can always resize the length, but a fairly good one is fine, especially when you're planning to do some sort of notification. But if you're not doing notification, you can use, um, you can make it as big as you want. So I'm gonna make it like this so you can see. Once you open the pop-up, it grays out the entire screen. That's how it's gonna show. You can change the gray color if you want to, but that's how high pop-up work. It grays out the entire screen. A pop-up grays out the entire screen so your user can focus on what's very, what's important for you. So the first thing I'll do whenever I get to the pop-up is to give it some sort of a container layout. So I'm gonna say a column. I like a column because it's gonna stack under each other and i'm going to give it a padding so like 40 40 40 all around so i give it 40 or i give it 20 all around so you can give it any figure you want to anything that feels comfortable for you can okay, work for you but i love to just go ahead and give it 40. i like to put a tiny roundness of say five on my pop-up and my graph scale is black i just leave it to the default but you can change it whenever you want to and so you can go ahead and put anything. So anything that fits into a group will fit into this pop-up. We can go ahead and say, um, 
you're going to put in an image inside this pop-up like so so you can see this is my image and i'm putting it in the pop-up and um okay i'm going to do so again so this is my image right there and my dynamic image now i'm just going to search for free image from the internet that i can use for now so i'm going to put in this so you can um this is where my image is going to be so i'm going to go from my, to my image layout i'm going to give it no fist width then i'm going to give it a fist house of say 300 We give it a fist height of 300. Let's go find that image again. That's my pop hop. And then we have the no. I'm going to take this away. No image. So this is my pop hop. And then we have the image B. So this is the image that we, that we choose. Let's see how large the pop up is. Our pop up mean height is 462. Let's go to our image. So fist height. So we just made a fist height so it can take the actual height of 300 on our and then we can just you know put a test in between and say this is the pop -up image this is the pop up image and we just go ahead and put a few things so turn it into a h2 dark that's fine put it in the middle that's fine and no fist width take it away no fist height take it away fit height to content that's fine and then right there go to appearance remove style put it in the middle that's cool center test basically that's cool and then we can come back to our pop-up we can come back to our pop-up right there click on the layout so this is just nothing this not you don't have to do any of this it is just me making it look a bit a bit beautiful so let's go to the to the to the juice part of juicy part of this so what you want to do is that when a user click on this we want to show the pop-up so that's it that's what you want to do you want to show the pop-up so we'll go to appearance click on start so remember that we're clicking on the button that's what we're clicking on so we want to say show an element so what do we want to show we just want to show the pop-up a that's what we want so then let's go ahead and preview don't forget what you're doing here is that you're simply showing an, an element and whenever you're done you want to give your users a way to hide the pop-up that's it the problem is going to be on the screen if you don't hide it so you want to give the user a way to hide it and a way to show it so if we click on this open pop-up right now you can see it shows us our image and it says this is a pop-up but there's no way for the user to click out of it or hide it so you can do so with the timer if you want to you can hide this part with a timer or you can just simply click a button so i'm going to do the part where you can click a button to hide it so i'm going to click a put an icon a material icon this is the way you normally hide stuff like so a material icon will take you to the left right there and then um we will just hmm, leave it like that let's say close so you can use this close icon and we can give it a margin top of say 20 bottom hmm, let's go so give a margin top margin right and so we're doing the reverse this time. So if we're hiding, we're doing the reverse this time with the X. So we go to we click on it, go to start, and then what we want to do, we want to hide an element. So as you can see, it's just the reverse. What are you hiding? We're saying we're hiding the pop-up A. Let's go ahead and do a refresh. If we do a refresh, we should see the pop-up disappear, and then we click it, it's showing our pop-up click here the pop-up is gone click again it shows click it's gone so what you're just doing is that we're hiding that's what we're doing so another thing that the pop-up can do is that it can enable you send data so you can send data from a repeating group or from a group to a pop-up so let's say for example we have a group we have a group and this group is a list of something so let's go to our database let's create a data called um, cars yeah, just create something called cards. We say name, and this will be a test. This will be a test. It will say description, and this will be some sort of a long test. So I'm not going to add an image to it because I don't really want to spend time creating the image. So let's go to our app data, click on cards, new entry. Uh, on the new entry, I'm going to add um, 
I'm just going to add some Lauren Ipsium to it. I'm going to add stuff like this. So Ctrl C, going back to my stuff, I'm going to add it. I'm going to say Cow1. So create. So let's just go ahead and add another color to it. I'm going to say add the same, add a different description. So I'm going to add this one so it'll be different. Ctrl C. Then then I'm gonna call this card two. So we have this. So let's go back to our, our repeating group. So this is our repeating group, and I'm just gonna make it. This is our repeating group, and it's gonna be data source type of content is going to be called data source is going to be do a search for cars, no constraint. Do a search for cars, and this is gonna be first item. So we're just going to say first item because we're not using a repeating group. And then under the first item, we're just going to put a test here. We're going to put a test here and it's going to be parent cars name. I'm pretty sure you know how to do this already. If you don't know how to do this, click on click on the on the link that you're seeing right now on top. It will take you to my bubble beginners course. It's pretty long. It's going to show you how to create, how to use most of the, uh, how to use bubble the best way yeah it's just going to show you that it's going to show you so um yeah it's a it's a beginner's course it's a four hours 26 minutes course on bubble it's free of charge you do not have to pay anything you just go ahead and take it and be smart so um we just go ahead and preview here so you can see this is our car. This is just fetching data directly from our database. So for example, if you wanna click here and we want to push this data over here, what we can do is that we can go right there, click on this, on this. we're still gonna open the pop-up. We'll click right there and we're gonna say data. So we're gonna go back to data. We're gonna say um, display data. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for where, where it says display data. So that's element action display data so what do we want to display I want to display data on the pop-up what do we want to display parent group car that's what I want to display okay I think that was too fast so let's do it again so what we want to display we want to display the parent group cars that's what we want to display then we'll show we will display and then show the pop-up so we'll make the showing the pop-up the last item while you display the first item so what we're doing is that we're sending data from one group to another group that's basically what we're doing so if you look at it is that one thing that you should know is that if this this particular group the type of content is the car if we go back to this pop-up the type of content must be a car if it's a user it's not going to work you can see you have an error here if it's a car you can see it's working so that's what you have to think about and then once you do so what you want to do you want to change the data source to um, I'm going to change the data source to car. No, just leave it. Leave it that. Leave it that way. And then here we can take take out take out the image. We can take out the the pop up test. It's gone. And then we can just add the test here. And this is going to be parent group car name. And then we're going to add another group again. And this is going to be the parent group cars description. And for the layout, let's just. Go, and that's it that's all we have to do so let's go ahead and do a refresh so we're doing a refresh open the pop-up so we can see our car and we can see the description so this is basically the way you would do things say for example you're building an app say a recipe application like we're building our bubble beginners course you want users to be able to view more of the, of the, of the recipe maybe a recipe has like 10 20 different um items and the and different items in the database and you want your users to be able to view all of them if they're browsing on the desktop Pop-up is the easiest way for you to send and get them to view more information without switching pages. That's one thing I like about pop-up. They don't have to switch pages. They just get to view this information when they click on a particular button. Okay, thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial, how to create pop-ups in Bubble.io. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new. Thank you for joining me. Again, if you've not subscribed, feel free to click on the subscription button below. Learn, um, 
Again, if you've not subscribed to this channel, click on the subscription link below so you can always get notified whenever I launch a new video. Thank you so much for watching again.